Hi there, I'm Cesar Camilo D. Rowan II. My topic is about environmental hazards and risk assessment, their principle and concept. An environmental hazard is a substance, a state, or an event which has a potential to threaten the surrounding natural environment, adversely affect people's health, including pollution and natural disasters such as storms and earthquakes. Hazards are based on air, water, and soil. It can include any single or combination of toxic chemical, biological, or physical agents in the environment, resulting from human activities or natural processes that may impact the health of exposed subjects. Any undesirable change in the physical, chemical, or biological features of air, land, and water is called pollution. Any physical, chemical, or biotech component, agent, or non-living substance that is responsible to bring about an undesirable change in the environment is called pollutant. One of the environmental hazards in air is air pollution. By definition, any atmospheric condition in which substances are present at concentrations high enough above their normal ambient levels to produce a measurable effect on man, animals, vegetation, or materials is called air pollution. A substance or effect dwelling temporarily or permanently in the air which adversely alters the environment by interfering with the health, the comfort, or the food chain, or by interfering with the property values of people is called air pollutant. We have classifications of air pollution. First is the gases. An example is a compound of sulfur, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, etc. Second, the natural contaminants. An example of this, pollen particles, bacteria. The last one is the aerosols. An example is the dust, smoke, mist, fumes, and fogs. We have sources of air pollution. Air pollution may originate from a natural or anthropogenic source or both sources. Natural source or man-made. An example of natural source, an erupting volcano, accidental fire, etc. An example for man-made are industrial units, thermal power plants, automobile exhausts, fossil fuel burning, mining, nuclear explosions. We have causes of air pollution. We have the primary air pollutants and secondary air pollutants. The primary air pollutants are carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxides of nitrogen. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas. An example are volcanoes, natural gas emissions, seed germination contribute to carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide comes from fossil fuel combustion, which affect on climate and increase global temperature. The third one is oxides of nitrogen comes from fuel combustion in automobiles and industries. Next is secondary air pollutants. We have smog and photochemical smog. Smog are air pollution in urban and industrial areas while photochemical smog a noxious mixture of gases and particles is produced when strong sunlight triggers photochemical reactions in the atmosphere. The major component of photochemical smog is ozone. We have effects of air pollution to human effects, example diseases, environmental effects, we have acid rain, ozone depletion, global climate change, and under that, we have the greenhouse effect and global warming. The next is water pollution. Water pollution is defined as alteration in physical, chemical, or biological characteristics of water 
making it unsuitable for designating best use in its natural states. We have causes of water pollution, industrial waste, domestic sewage, thermal and radioactive waste, biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. We have effects of water pollution, physical effects, chemical toxic waste, chemical nutrient effects, and microorganism effect. For physical effects, acetyl particles may slowly accumulate on vegetation foliage and produce a deposit on waterbed and small suspended particles make water turbid and reduces light penetration. It also reduces photosynthesis and restricts plant growth. For chemical toxic waste, we have toxic metals, acid and alkali toxins, and pesticide toxins. Chemical nutrient effects. In water pollution, the two most important nutrients are nitrogen and phosphorus usually present in nitrates and phosphates. Microorganism effects. Waste that are discharged in water contain pathogenic organisms that are capable of causing human diseases. An example are cholera, typhoid fever, bacillary dysentery, etc. We have control measures for water pollution to prevent or minimize the mixing of pollutants into water bodies. The maintenance and restoration of water of all types such as surface water and groundwater. Industries should treat their effluents before they dispose it into water bodies. The next pollution is soil pollution. Soil pollution is contamination of soil by, by human and natural activities which may cause harmful effects on living beings. We have causes of soil pollution, the natural cause and man-made cause. Under the natural cause, we have landslides and hurricanes. Man-made cause is through urbanization, which is contamination of soil due to wastewater unfit for agricultural land due to construction of dams, projects in nearby places. Industrial waste, mining, domestic waste, radioactive waste is due to nuclear power plants, nuclear testing, and explosion. We have effects of soil pollution. First, the disposal of industrious waste on fertile lands degrades the quality of soil. Second, urban waste slowly poison the soil, damaging its fertility. Third is radioactive elements that present in polluted soil enter food chain through plants. And the causes we have planting of trees must be encouraged. Solid waste can also be used for electricity generation. And lastly, use of chemical fertilizers or pesticides should be minimized. Methods to control soil pollution First, reducing chemical fertilizer and pesticides use. Second, recycling is another way to reduce and control soil pollution. Third, reusing of materials. Fourth, deforestation. The cutting down of trees causes erosion pollution and the loss of fertility in the topsoil. Next topic is about risk assessment. What is risk? Risk is the likelihood that a specified harm is caused from a particular hazard. Risk is the chance or a probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. It may also apply to situations with property or equipment loss or harmful effect effects on the environment. What is risk assessment? A risk assessment is simply a careful examination of what in your work could cause harm to people so that you can assess whether you have taken enough precautions or should be, do more to prevent harm. Assessments should be done by a competent person or team of individuals 
who have a good working knowledge of the situation being studied include either on the team or as sources of information the supervisors and workers who work with the process under review as these individuals are the most familiar with the operation. We have risk assessment steps. First, hazard identification. Second, identify who might be harmed and how. Third, evaluate the risks and decide on precautions. Fourth, identify control measures and record your findings. Fifth, communicate risk and recommend actions and review if needed. Step one, hazard identification. Step two, identify who might be harmed and how. Be workers carrying out the task, other nearby workers, visitors, maintenance staffs, new or young workers, pregnant women, persons with disability, property, environment, or company reputation. Step three, as shown in the picture, we evaluate risks through how serious the consequences towards risk and how often the likelihood towards risk. Step four, identify control measures. Control measures include actions that can be taken to reduce the potential of exposure to the hazard, or the control measures could be to remove the hazards or to reduce the likelihood of the risk of the exposure to the hazards being realized. A simple control measure would be the secure guarding of removing parts of machinery eliminating the potential of contact. When we look at control measures, we often refer to the hierarchy of control measures. From the top, it's the most preferred, down to the least preferred. We can control measures through eliminate or substitute, engineering controls, administrative measures, and personal protective equipment. Last step, communicate risks. The effective communication of information and opinion on risk associated with hazards, risks and control measures is an essential and integral component of the risk assessment process. The fundamental goal of risk communication is to provide meaningful, relevant and accurate information in clear and ununderstandable terms to specific people. The real-time exchange of information, advice and opinions between experts or officials and people who face the threat from hazard to survival, health or economic or social well-being, everyone at risk is able to take informed decisions to mitigate the effects of the threat such as a disease outbreak and take protective and preventive measures. Guiding principles for risk communication best practices, create and maintain trust, Acknowledge and communicate even in uncertainty. Coordinate. Be transparent and fast with the first and all communications. Be proactive in public communication. Involve and engage those affected. Use integrated approaches. Build national capacity support. Thank you and God bless.